Uh, again, I just want to say thanks very much to, um, to Chris and Natalie for having me here today. And um, it's really exciting. I've really enjoyed the presentations. In fact, I don't really want to be up here speaking. I want to hear more great presentations. <laughs> but uh, the topic that I'm going to address today is about questions and how great questions really drive the world forward. And part of the reason for that is I've been running my, my little business now for about 21 years. And one of the key secrets to our client's success is, is for us to help them ask the right questions. So I'm going to cover a few sort of different areas in terms of, of how that happens. And the clock's running, so that's good. Thanks, Chris. Um, really, when you think about it, questions really yield the ultimate thing, which is answers. But if the question isn't right, then the answer isn't going to real, really yield any value. A great example is, you know, you go to a cocktail party and you run up to a friend and you go, Hi, how are you? And they go, I'm fine. How are you? And you go, I'm fine. But really, you don't really get anywhere. You're not really getting to, to the heart of the matter. And I think that's really the key thing. And if you look at research and the industries that really are good at this, which is about an $11.3 billion a year industry, they get a lot of it wrong. And I, I, I can attest to that because we'll be working with a lot of reputable companies. Uh, they'll ask us to come in and do a marketing campaign. And they'll say, we've done all this fantastic research. And we'd like to share the results. And we spend a lot of money on this. And here's the deck. And we'll flip through it. And we'll flip through it. And what I call it is, I sort of joke with my team. I always say, this is one of those, do you have the time decks? And they say, what do you mean? I say, well, instead of actually giving me the time, the, basically the deck is, do you have the time? And the answer is, yes. But there's no data. And that's the big challenge. And that's why you really want to dig down. So when you look at the people who are really good at asking questions, um, they know how to ask the right questions versus the wrong questions. And I'll get into that. And then I'll talk about sort of three key questions. Um, one is know yourself. Two is know who your audience is. And three is know what they need. They all sound pretty simple. But it's amazing how many times people overlook that. So when you think about the people that know how to ask the right questions, these are folks like, oh, I'll turn to the professionals, I guess, like Oprah or Barbara Walters. And one of the most amazing things about those people is they can be polite and ask all those great questions. But at the end of the day, that's not what their job is. Their job is to really get to the heart of the issue. And I found it just un unbelievable watching these guys because they can get a world leader or a rock star or a famous personality or someone who just the most sto stoic person in the world to sit in their audience. And once they've signed the release and said, fair game for whatever you want to ask, you know that at the end of that interview, they're going to regret signing that piece of paper <laughs> because they're, they're going to get lured into something that's quite something. And you know, if you look at Barbara Walters, she's been able to interview everyone from the Shah of Iran to Monica Lewinsky to even Oprah herself. And, and one of my favorite interviews was when she was talking to the Kardashian family, very popular in popular culture. And you kind of wonder, well, what would you interview the Kardashians about? And so she said to them pretty much right off the bat, and it's a good interview on YouTube, she says quite directly, and this is one of the great things about great questions, is they take courage and they have to be honest questions. She said, you don't have any talent, you can't dance, and you can't sing. So why do you think you're so appealing? And the amazing thing was, the answers that she got from the family who were all sitting there we're very much in keeping of why people do actually love them. But it really yield a really in, uh, yielded a really nice inside look at that family and what the sort of phenomenon around them was. So asking the right questions is really about not pulling any punch in, punches, being respectful, but really getting down to the heart of the matter. The wrong questions, of course, are the ones like, do you have the time? And the answer is yes, or how are you doing? And you don't really get any meat out of that. So when you're looking at, if any of you are doing any research projects coming up, when you look at the questions that you're asking on your surveys, make sure the questions aren't easily answered. Make sure that they are the ones that, like today, uh, provoke some really good thought. So on to just sort of three uh, key questions. So the first one is know yourself. And uh, as was mentioned, I'm the vice chairman of, of uh, Canada's 10 most admired corporate cultures. And what's fun about that is I get to go across Canada and interview great companies and companies that aspire to be great and ask them why their culture 
drives their bottom line performance. So how does their corporate culture make them successful? And the answers are really interesting. And we get all kinds of different, uh, different responses to our questionnaires. But the one thing that really strikes me, and I, it's, the, it's the thing I know right off the bat whether the company is going to win or not, is how well they know themselves, i.e., what do they do? And an example of that is one of my clients. They make um, small airplanes from a five-seat propeller, or sorry, a five-seat personal jet down to a, a two-seat uh, propeller plane called Diamond Aircraft, and they're in London, Ontario. In my first meeting with them, they took me through the factory, and I saw all these hundreds of airplanes lined up on the, uh, uh, on the assembly line, and it was really amazing. So we got up to the president's office, and we sat down, and I said, so, Peter, what do you do here? And Peter's an engineer, and he kind of looked at me with a very stern and somewhat ticked off look, and he goes, uh, didn't you just see the factory? We, we build airplanes here. And I said, well, no, no, that's not actually what you do here. What you do, what you do are build things that enhance people's lifestyles. They're lifestyle enablers. You build personal time machines. And that's what I mean about knowing yourself, is you, is you have to look beyond the obvious and see uh, what's really there. So the next, the next point is uh, to know your audience. And again, I'll use Diamond as an example. Because uh, when, when we were doing the research with them and trying to figure out why their marketing had worked in the past and hadn't, um, the question we had was, well, who's your target audience? And they were able to articulate it. Well, it's primarily male, about 98% male, typically 55, built life, built career, great data. So what's the one thing I ask you guys What's the one thing you'd most expect someone who's buying an airplane to have besides money? <coughs> a pilot's license. You'd expect you're going to buy the thing you want to fly it. We found out, actually, from doing a little bit of research, that 43% of their private buyers don't have a pilot's license. But they, that had never crossed their minds before, so they've been marketing entirely to pilots. And what was interesting about that is it changed the nature of who the audience truly was. So instead of talking to people in pilot tech lingo, like the DA-40 has a G-1000 with a DFC-700 coupled autopilot with step-down approaches for your IFR, which is how they had been talking to them, you can say to them, next time, you're, you, know, next time you, you want to fly down to Florida on the dream vacation you want to have, take our DA-40. So it's simple stuff, but it really makes a big, big difference because you can miss the mark. Um, in terms of looking a little bit deeper at that, we also we're looking at who they were marketing to because they were marketing, they, they did assess that their market was male, 98%. So we started following um, them around on some of their sales calls and we noticed there was someone else in the wings, which was the spouse. So we started talking to the spouse and we realized that there was no way the guy was buying the airplane unless she was going to feel good in it. And back to the mortality here. Uh, <laughs> She wanted to make sure she was going to live a long time. So that changed the nature again from talking about airplanes just being fun and all that kind of great stuff, which is what the guy wants, to airplanes being safe and, and, and fuel efficient and all those sorts of things. So you have to really balance those two things off. So it's really critical, again, to look beyond what's obvious when you're looking at, you know, know your audience. So they, the next piece, of course, is know what they need. So I've kind, of, I've kind of covered that a little bit, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my wife. Um, some of you may know her. She's a, an interior designer called Sarah Richardson, and she has a television show, um, and she's done about 160 episodes uh, over the years. And do any of you watch the show, just so I have a slight idea? Okay, great. Um, what's interesting is typically Sarah knows her audience very well, and, and we do a lot of surveys and things to ask people what they want. Do you want more design? Do you want, do you like kitchens, bathrooms, that sort of stuff? And then she takes that information and then typically does her new show on it. This year, with her new show, which is ironically called Real Potential, uh, she was told by the network that they wanted to skew her to be more male appeal. So they took Tommy, who's her sidekick, off the show because they felt he skewed too, too female. Um, and then dictated how she did the show and turned it into basically a real estate show. Um, she's owned, she's been the number one in one of the most, uh, one of the most enviable demographics uh, for almost 10 years, which is the woman 25 to 54 market. 
they have now started to sink that ship because trying to bring mail, uh, trying to bring more ma mail watchers in, has really upset that. So they've watered down the main show. She's getting lots of negative fan mail saying, "I love you, Sarah, but bring back the design. What are you doing out showing houses?" And everything's and so things are starting to suffer. So I guess in that case. Know what your audience needs. Men typically, from our research, show, don't really love those home improvement design shows. They do love Mike Holmes. He's fantastic, but it's a, wholly, it's a very different demographic than choosing paint and so forth. So make sure you know what people need and what they want. And those are, those are sort of two key things. The other side of asking questions and really good questions is not to just take courage and, and, and ask those basic key things and dig deep but to look at things from the other side. And, and I always tell my, tell my staff, when you're asking questions, everyone's opinion in the room really counts because think of it as there's a bottle of wine on the table and you're having dinner with someone. You can see the back side of the bottle. You know, it's red, you know, maybe it's a Bordeaux, but if you don't ask them any questions about what they see, they'll be able to tell you because they see the label, the year, the brand, the house, all those sorts of things. So you really have to ask people's perspectives to get a lot of that. And one of those perspectives that you need to really focus on, which we're working on with a, one of our uh, clients right now, is they know a lot about why people buy. So they've done all the research and they understand people like us because of our pricing, they like us because of our product offering, they like us because we've been around for a long time and we're stable, but they still can't figure out why they're not getting the numbers that they're looking for. And so one of the most important questions to ask is not just why, but why not? So we've started to look at the other side of things, which is why aren't people buying from you? And that's a harder challenge, of course, because those people have definitely left your network. But it's really, really important to do that. And if you think about it, it's kind of like the kid that, you know, that urban, urban myth of the psychology exam, where the kid walked in and, and opened up his exam, and, and the only question was why? Anyone know the punchline? <laughs> anyway, that's right. So, so apparently he wrote why not and got 100%. <laughs> but that's the key thing is you have to look at, you really have to look at, uh, at both sides of, of that argument. And in terms of um, other questions that, that, that people look at, I think you really have to understand that you can't take anything for granted. So start off by asking the right questions. Make sure they're good, tough questions that really dig deep. Make sure you know who you are and what people are looking for. But make sure you don't make any assumptions either. And back to sort of the restaurant example, uh, one key thing is if you're, if you're in a restaurant, and let's say it's like Olay tonight, Olé Olay, it's an Italian restaurant, and you're sitting next to people next door, and you know that there's very few things on the menu, the trick is, as a good marketer, you have to, you have to really know what they want. So imagine if you just order them dinner off the menu and there's a few items. What do you think the choices are that you can actually order them what they want? Despite the fact you're in the same environment and you know a lot about them. It's very little. And one of the things that always surprises me, especially in marketing, is how few people actually ask their audience the questions. So you have to ask your questions and say, what, what is it that you like? And when you finally have that, then you can build a really good plan that truly, truly connects with people. And as Voltaire said, I'll just end on this comment, Voltaire said, uh, judge a person not by, the question, or not by the answers they have, but by the questions they ask. Thank you.